Thank you to all virtual viewers and welcome to New Salem's Sunday service. New Salem's church vision for 2022 is simply, we lift, he draws. We're back with in-person and online Bible study each Tuesday night at 7 p.m. and on New Salem's Facebook page and YouTube channel. Tune in for virtual Hour of Power each Wednesday at noon on Facebook and YouTube and each Monday night at 7.15 p.m. for conference call, Corporate Prayer. Thank you to all staff and volunteers who came out on yesterday for the food drive. Parents, listen closely. We are elated to have Christian Academy back and running. Our teachers are thrilled and so are our students. We appreciate you for all your dedication to the ministry by bringing your children. Starting during the month of September and going forward, we will have some fun and informative events during Christian Academy. On first and second Sundays, the children and youth classes will be held from 8.15 to 8.45 a.m. At 8.45, the children and youth will assemble in the Sadie Wiley for joint activities planned by teachers and superintendents. Snacks will be provided. Fourth Sunday will be set aside for highlights, and fifth Sunday will include a special presentation. Lastly, but certainly not least, we are excited to bring back Reading with Rev. That's right, our babies will be reading with our very own pastor on the second Sunday. We will be incentivizing our children and parents by rewarding the parent who brings their children to Christian Academy four consecutive Sundays with a $50 gift card and a treat bag for the children. We are so excited about this move of God and look forward to making Christian Academy great again. Please feel free to see Sister Raven Adair for any questions or any of our Christian Academy teachers. Lastly, there are now three worship services for your worship experience. The 7 a.m. traditional service, our 9.30 a.m. service with full band, and our 11.30 The Bridge contempor Contemporary Service. Whatever era, gospel genre, a worship experience connects with you, come join us. We'd love to have you at the church where we lift and he draws. This is Alexis McKay, and this has been your New Salem News. Salem. Say good morning, New Salem. How y'all feel this morning? Amen. We made it another week. Amen. And we get a brand new chance to worship a God who's given us brand new mercies. Amen. And we ought to be glad about it. Why don't you stand with me all over the house as we prepare to worship God the way he deserves to be worshiped. Amen. Amen. If we would, let us prepare our hearts and our minds for our mission statement, our theme scripture. Those of you who are viewing us online, we welcome you into the sanctuary. 
And those of you who were in the house, y'all look good this morning. Amen. Amen. Shall we begin? The New Salem Missionary Baptist Church will provide an opportunity to clearly understand the gospel, grow in relationship with Christ, and experience a sense of belonging in a nurturing Christian community. We therefore submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ in faith, recognize the mission of the body of Christ is essentially one of evangelism and discipleship that in turn gives birth to the ministries of Christian education, missions, and evangelism. Commit to a Christian lifestyle of love, sacrifice, and service as reflected in Jesus Christ. Thus, yield to him our stewardship of time, talents, tissues, and tithes, that the kingdom of God will be blessed. Our theme scripture comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verse 32, and it reads, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. And our vision this, this year, church, is what? We lift, he draws. One more time. We lift, he draws. Amen. Let us go to God in prayer. Gracious God, our Father in heaven, we come to you now again at this early hour of the morning. For Lord, we know that many of us have already thanked you this morning because we know the minute our eyes flew open, we owed you a gratitude of thanks. We know, Lord, that when our eyes flew open, you gave us brand new mercies and we owed you a gratitude of thanks. So we thank you already this morning, but we don't tire of giving you praise. We don't tire of thanking you. For your word tells us, Lord, that if we had 10,000 tongues, it would not be enough to tell you thank you for all that you've done for us. So for just the things that you've done on this day, we offer you praise on now, Lord. For just the things that you've done this morning, Lord, we give you glory in this house. For you've allowed us to come from the four corners of this city and lift up your holy name. And we know, Lord, that's no accident. You had to have a mighty hand in making it, make it, allowing us to make it safe here on this morning. We had to dodge robbers and thieves and rapists and murderers, Lord. And we thank you for the opportunity to just make it to your house. And you clothed us in our right minds. We remembered, Lord, that we owed you thanks on this morning. We remembered the things that you did for us yesterday, and we owed you thanks for today, Lord. So we come now and we lift up our hearts to you now. We lift up our minds to you now, Lord. We lift up our worship to you now, Lord, because you are worthy of all the praise. So as we go forward on this day, Lord, we ask you to just allow us to cast our cares upon you because your word tells us that you care for us. We know, Lord, that there's no problem that's too hard for you. So we put it in your hands now, Lord, and ask you to have your way with it. Allow your majesty, allow your magnificence, allow your majestic will to be done in our lives, Lord. We love you and we thank you, Lord. And as we prepare to hear a word from you, Lord, prick our hearts so that we may leave this place the better. We love you, Lord, and we go forward in Jesus' name. And for his name's sake, we pray. Amen and thank God. How many love the Lord this morning? Give us a hand. Praise his name. Anybody glad to be here this morning? We're going to praise them real early this morning. Come on, put your hands together like that. You can smile if you want to. Yeah. Come on, put them together one more time. That the doors of progress have closed in your face, and no matter what you do, your friends don't appreciate. You need to just steal and go down on your knees. 
Tell God, tell God to have mercy. Come on, put them together. Tell him, come on, Lord, please, Lord. I want you to see. Can we do it one more time? Listen. Mm -hmm. It seems that the doors of progress have closed in your face. And no matter what you do, your friends don't appreciate Tell you what to do, you just feel away and go down on your knees. Uh, tell the Lord, uh, tell God to have mercy. Tell him to come on. Please, Lord, uh, I need you to see. Can I say one thing right here? Listen. The right way. Is a narrow way It don't have No cooks and men Since I started uh, On life's Christian journey I found out that Jesus Is my only friend Tell you what you do You just feel And go down On your knees Tell the Lord, uh, you can tell him have mercy. Mm -hmm. Tell him, come on, please, mm -hmm. Lord, uh, I want you to see. Let me do it one more time, y'all, and we got to go. The right way is the narrow way. It don't have a... No cooks in me Since I started On my Christian journey I found out that Oh Jesus is y'all My only friend When I need the Lord I just kneel And go down on my knees Tell the Lord Tell God to have mercy Listen is anybody in the building? 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 Is anybody in here? Ever call on Jesus? Can I ask you one question? I want to ask you one question. I want to ask you one question Won't God come uh, See about you Is it anybody here Ever call on Jesus Is it anybody here Ever call on the Lord Won't the Lord make a way out uh, Won't the Lord make a way for you uh, won't the Lord make a way for you? Nah. Won't the Lord make a way for me? I need, need one witness. Uh. Somebody know He will. Is anybody know God will? Is anybody know God can? I need one witness, y'all. I need one witness, y'all. Like my mama told me. Uh. It may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. I want to ask you one question now. Just one more question now. Then we're going to leave it alone. Won't God wake a way for you? Won't God, I need to see a witness out here. Won't God make a way for you? If you know the Lord will make a way for you. Let me see you wave your hand. Won't God make a way for ya? Won't God make a way for ya? Won't the Lord make a way for ya? Oh, I know He will. Oh, I tried the man. Oh, I tried the man. Lord, I tried.
strong man. I do it for myself. I try to for myself. Yes, he will. Oh, yeah. Tell him to come on. Tell him to come on, Jesus. Tell him to come on, Jesus. I tell him to come on, Jesus. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Ah, come on, Jesus. Ah, come on, Jesus. Ah, come on, Jesus. Can't make it by myself. Can't do it on my own. I need him, y'all. I need him. I need him. Yes, I need him. Oh, come on, Jesus. 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 Lord, I need you. Can't make it, just can't make it. Can't make it, just can't make it. Can't do it by myself. Can't make it on my own. Oh, come on, Jesus. Come on, Lord. Come on, Lord. Tell him, come on, Jesus. Tell him, come on, Jesus. Tell him, come on, Jesus. I want you to see about me. sons of the house, all of our deacons, our brothers, our sisters, it's good to be here to have another chance to worship and to praise the Lord in the beauty of holiness. I'm certain you've already stopped to say to the Lord, thank you for him bringing us safe this fall didn't have to wake us this morning, but he did. That alone is enough to be thankful for. Certainly enjoyed our men singing. Amen. Come on, let's bless God. Many, many, many years ago, I, I frequent Morrison's cafeteria where Bramonicue's mother worked and she made sure she gave me the best of food, delicious, delightful. Occasionally she'd come out of the kitchen and come sit down with me while I'd eaten and she said, you know, I got a boy over there at your church can sing. I said, you got a boy at my church? She said, yeah, it's a little short fella. I said, but he can, sure enough, I had to seek him out and sure enough, I found out he can sing. He can <laughs> Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. Matthew 14. We always, I had to be corrected. I'll, I used to put an S on Matthew and Matthews. And until I decided to look at it and saw there was no S on it. 
And straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitude away. When he had sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain upon to pray. And when evening was come, he was there alone. The ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with the waves, for the wind was contrary. In the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying it's a spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when he, when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. Straightway Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto, said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore did thou doubt it? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. And then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him and saying of a truth, Thou art the Son of God. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll save my subject for the next service. Uh, should be done worked it up by then. But I want to ask a question. What have we learned in the last two years? You do know that everything happened for a purpose. God don't waste time teaching lessons about without looking for results. I spent a lot of years, I spent two extra years in secular education trying to get out of high school. I spent at least 20 years in theological training trying to prepare myself for the best people God has. And I've noticed often that when the teacher is teaching, he's constantly talking. The students should be listening. But then when examination come, the teacher is silent. He's expecting you to perform. God had been somewhat silent the last couple of years, hadn't made a lot of noise, but he've had us in class. I hope that we should learn that in class, there's a reason for us being in class. One of the things I've learned, and that is that science has its place. That you can't downplay science, it has its place and have had its place in these last two years perhaps more visible than normal. Uh, science is of the utmost importance. Man is extremely smart. Man is so smart until he found things, was able to do things that normally a person you would think couldn't do. Man, North Carolina, he put together an iron bird and fixed it so you can eat breakfast in Memphis, lunch in New York City, attend an evening concert in Paris, France. He smiled. He put together this phone business, this Alexander the Graham Bell, where you can sit in Memphis and talk with a relative in Europe, Asia, or Africa. Man is smart to, to the extent that he designed an escalator where you can walk while standing still. Man is smart enough to go out catching honey's lightning, change it into electricity, 
fix it so you can just touch a button and be warm in the winter, cool in the summer. He's smart enough to make substitutes for the real thing, Oreo for butter, synthetic for rubber, cycling for sugar, postering for coffee. He is smart. But we have to be careful because convenience can be detrimental. That we get so comfortable with convenience until when something real happens, we can't handle it. I got on the plane yesterday to come from Oakland, California, back to Memphis and uh, Mary make my reservations uh, Wherever I go, she makes sure that she make the reservations, whoever I'm going to, and send them the located number, and they pay for the ticket on that end. And when I'm not in first class, she makes sure I'm in comfort. That's next to first class, which means there's a little more space. Uh, you get comfortable, at least a little comfortable when you travel. The seats on the airplane is designed for a person weighing between 130 and 150 pounds to be comfortable with three in a row. Yeah. Yesterday when I got on the plane, I was in Southern Comfort and uh, sitting comfortably in row 14C. That's the, that's the aisle row. And I thought I was going to have the whole row by myself. Right before the door closed, a gentleman walked in, weighed about 350 pounds, and he was, he said, sir, I'm sitting there. So I had to get up to let him in, and right behind him, here's another uh, European brother that weighed at least 450 pounds. Uh, he said, I'm sitting right here too. So here I am. <sighs> And, and, and what saved me was that I wear this cap all the time. It's got God is good all the time on the front of the cap. And I love Jesus on the back. And the flight attendant saw me and saw that I love Jesus. <laughs> and she walked up and said, Dr. Ray said, listen, she had checked the schedule just to see what my name was and sent me in another southern comfort. But I don't need to get comfortable with comfort because there'll come a time when comfort is not there. And what has happened in the last couple of years, God moved us out of our comfort zone. Uh, he moved us out because when you're in comfortable places, you get complacent. Uh, you get to the place where you think that nothing will move you that we can do what we want to do. And so God says, I need to show you understand that science has its place, but I'm greater than science. That I can shut science down <laughs> whenever I get ready to shut it down. I, I told you this story, I, I mentioned it here a bunch of times and all over the country as well, that one day science walked up to faith and said, let's take a stroll. Faith said, all right, I'll go with you. And science start traveling over the territory. Science says to Faith, say, see that flower? So I can tell you <coughs> which flower the bee get his honey from. They kept walking and they came to a forest and science says to Faith, see the forest? Faith said, I see it. Science said, I can name every tree. That's a walnut, that's a pine, that's an apple, that's a sassafras, that's a willow, that's a maple, that's a pecan, that's an oak tree, that's a willow tree. Faith said, that's good science. Kept walking, saw a huge rock in the road, science stopped, faith said, faith, see the rock? He said, yeah, he said, I can look at it and tell you how old it is. Faith said, that's good science. They kept walking and then came to a huge body of water where there was a huge body of water but no bridge. Science stopped. Faith pushed him in the back, said, go on, science. Science, I can't go any further because there's a body of water but no bridge. Faith said, all right, now turn around and follow me. They went back over the same territory. Faith said to science, so you told me about these flowers. I said, but you missed two. So you said nothing about the Rose of Sharon. 
of the lily of the valley. They went through the forest and said, you named all of these trees, but it's one you said nothing about, and that's the tree of life. And went back to this huge rock, said, you told me how old this rock was, but you said nothing about the rock of ages. And then when it got to the huge body of water, faith didn't do like science, faith started walking across the water. When faith got way out there, science was on the shore. So how you do that? Face, I got something under me that I can stand up on. Science has its place. But I need to tell you there's something greater than science. There's faith. We have been baffled by corona for two years. We travel everywhere showing how pretty, pretty we are. God said, listen, I want the inward beauty to show, so I'm going to fix it so they can't see your face. <laughs> that you got to have something on the inside to show your real beauty. I see something like that in the text. Here is a storm. There are several storms in the Bible. Uh, this is a storm in the absence of Jesus in the boat. You remember in Mark chapter 4, uh, there's a storm with Jesus on board. Uh, he's in the hinder part of the ship. Asleep on a pillar. And they awakened him and said, Master, do you care if we perish? But Matthew records another storm with Jesus out of the boat. You see, this storm was designed to let the disciples know even though his physical presence was not with them, he was still with them. You see, too many people believe that since I cannot see Jesus, that he's not present. But he's always present. He teaches us a lesson about storms. And I should say to us this morning that all of us are in one or three categories. We're either in a storm or just come out of a storm or on the way to a storm. <sighs> but God will see to us encountering a storm. That is what you call a domestic storm. You're getting along with your spouse, thank God for it. You all hugging each other, enjoying each other, saying sweet nothings. Enjoy it as long as you can. Because if you live long enough, a storm going to come. <laughs> Tongue and teeth fall out. I wasn't here last week. I can take my time. Yeah. T -t Tongue and teeth fall out. A storm will occur. I've had people over and over say, Reverend, how do you handle domestic storms? I said, if you can't make it in peace, make it in pieces. Because storms will as a domestic storm. But there's not only a domestic storm, there are other storms that you encounter. There is what you call a financial storm. Financial storm is when you have more mutt than money. Uh, and sometimes it's not a money problem. It's a management problem. 
Because sometimes we spend money we don't have on stuff we don't need, trying to impress folk we don't like. <sighs> you got a credit card with a thousand dollar limit on it, and you just pay back what they tell you, fifteen dollars a month, and think you're getting away. By the time you pay that thousand dollars, you will have paid back eighteen thousand. Uh, you buy a car that costs thirty thousand dollars. When you pay it back, you're paid back forty two thousand. Uh, and then you consolidate your loan. It get worse. You buy a house costs one hundred fifty thousand dollars. When you pay it back, you're paid four hundred and fifty thousand. Y'all getting quiet on me. Uh, we can end up in a financial storm. Y'all hear me? That's a relationship storm that you thought you had the best of friends. And your best friend betrayed you. There is a health storm that everything you do look like Instead of helping you get better, you get worse. If it ain't one thing, it's something else. By the time you get your knee right, your hip mess up. Get your hip in order. <laughs> your shoulder get out of place. Get your shoulder in place, your mind starts skipping. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Get your mind right, your heart starts fluttering. If it ain't one thing, it's something else. There is what you call a help stone. Uh, Y'all hear me, don't you? But you can get caught up in a spiritual stone. Because I need you to know. The devil ain't going to leave you alone just because you said, I surrender to the Lord. The devil said, let's see. He saw everything but the kitchen sink at you to try to get you. But I discovered that with God, he used storms for his convenience. You see, a storm it's God's means of transportation. God, when he comes see you, he don't catch a bus. He don't ride on a 737 jet. He don't come in his sports car. He comes see you in a storm. Because without the storm, many times you wouldn't pay him no attention. The disciples was left alone. Jesus in the mountain praying. Now notice the text that Jesus constrained his disciples to get in the boat. In other words, Jesus urged them, we're going to the other side. You get in the boat. He put them in the boat knowing the storm is coming. And he go up in the mountain to pray. While he was praying, a storm came. Now, this trip should have taken about two hours to get from one side of the lake to the other. But they had been in this, this lake now for nine hours because the storm delayed to travel. 
Storms will delay your travel. Look like I'm going to have to do this by myself. You can't make as much speed in the storm. You could without the storm. The storm delayed at them because they've been there nine hours. The text said they were in the midst of the sea. Miss mean it's just as far to turn back. As it is to go forward. Am I making any sense to y'all? So they couldn't say, I'm going back home. Because it was just as far. But it was the fourth watch of the night. Fourth watch of the night was from three to six o'clock in the morning. They did not have any lights out on the sea. Cell phones didn't work. Couldn't call 911. Uh, couldn't reach the friends. There they were out on the sea in a storm. The text said it had tossed. From one side to the other. You can't be at ease when you're in the storm. It will toss you from one place to the other. They were in a storm. They will have a witness for the watch of the night. Jesus shows up. But watch this. He come to them in a storm. It's his means of transportation. You see, sometimes you ain't gonna call him until you're in a storm. More prayer meetings have jumped up these two years than ever before. Let's pray. Let's pray. Well, the devil, we've been trying to get you to pray all the time. Do I have a witness? Uh, somebody sneezed one time. Been trying to get you. Get your physical. Check yourself. See if something lurking that ain't there. Oh, I ain't got to get no. I'm going to the doctor. <laughs> and on your way there, you have a prayer meeting. God used storms for his means of transportation. Uh, he come to them walking on the water. Because the text said, they were crying. Now, if I was talking about sinners, it'd be one thing. But these are not sinners. These are saints. But not just saints. These are disciples. These are the folk that been with Jesus for three years. They scared. Now if saved folks scared, what do you think about others? That's why you can't waste your testimony. When you're around people, share the goodness of Jesus. Because even though they don't tell you, you don't know what in the world they're going through. If the test scare you, what do you think it will do to others? They cried. They were in the storm. 
water was over their head. <laughs> and Jesus came to where they were. They didn't have no extra boats to get there. Didn't have no helicopter to let him down. But he got to him. I like that because I don't care where you are. Jesus can get to you. And what I love about it, the stuff that was over their head was under his feet. <laughs> he just... The Bible said Jesus came to them walking on the water. Abraham left home with a promise and a suitcase going to a land he knew not of. But Abraham did never walk on the water. Moses led 600,000 Israelites out of Egypt into the promised land. But Moses didn't walk on the water. <laughs> Joshua marched around the walls of Jericho once a day on the seventh day, marched seven times, but he didn't walk on the water. Samson took the jawbone of an ass and killed 1,000 Philistines, but uh, Samson didn't walk on the water. Solomon was the wisest man to ever live, but he didn't walk on the water. But Jesus came walking not hurriedly if though he was trying to get out of the way of a storm he came walking not on tiptoes if though he was trying to avoid waking in a sleeper he came walking not with a bent back if though he was carrying a heavy load he came Walking like a bride going to the altar to meet the bridegroom. He came walking like a judge walking to a chamber to try his case. He came walking. Do I have a witness? He came walking on the water. Peter saw him. They thought he he was a spirit. Translation said a ghost. You know when you're in a storm you see things. <laughs> when it's a storm stuff starts showing up that don't normally show up when you're in a storm. Fear takes over. Whenever fear takes over, fear will keep you from having the right vision. Fear will give you ulcer in the stomach. Fear will make your legs limber. Fear will create a form of distrust. Peter said, if it's you, bid me come to you on the water. Lord have mercy. Jesus says to Peter, be of good cheer. Now, wait a minute. Lord, I'm in a storm. And you telling me to shout? Lord, look like we're going under. And you telling me to, to be happy about it. He said, be of good cheer. But then watch what it says. It is I. Now you can't let this little word pass you. Because he didn't just say I. He was referring to I am. <laughs> Doesn't it take a moment? Because God himself was known as the I am God. And the Bible introduced Jesus as being the I am. 
And so when Jesus said, it is I, he was saying to Peter, you know me. Yeah. He was saying, even though you're in a storm, I am is here. Lord, uh, he said, I'm the covenant God. I'm the one that won't let nothing happen. Don't, don't you remember when I told you, Lo, I'll be with you. Always, even to the end of the world. Peter said, if it's you, bid me come to you on the water. The word come is mentioned in the King James Version 682 times. It is an invitation. But when this word come comes from the, the lips of Jesus, it's like the Lord rolling out a carpet. <laughs> and when you walk, you're not walking on the water. You're walking on the word. And how many know, as long as you stand on the word, you can't go under. Oh, <laughs> I got to let y'all go. <laughs> you see, too many people try to walk, but not walking on the words. <laughs> Peter, I like it because Peter did some other folk didn't do. When God gave him the invitation, Peter stepped out of the boat. You see, in this life, you got to have some boat step in faith. A lot of folk, God gave you the ability to start your own business. But you're still making $12 an hour because you don't have enough faith to step out of the boat. I wish you had some help in this house. If you had enough faith, to at least step out of the, the boat, how I many know oh God can work miracle? I gotta let you. Yeah. Number one, the storm uh, is God's means of transportation. But number two, it's God's means of testing. Because God wants you to know that he know who you are when you've been through a test. No test, no testimony. No testimony, no testifying. Do I have a witness? <laughs> Let me let y'all go. I've held y'all long enough. Peter stepped out of the boat. <laughs> but evidently, Thomas was on the ship. And while Peter <laughs> was walking on the water, <laughs> Thomas hollered uh, from the ship, uh, Peter, <laughs> that's a wave. <laughs> that's why when you're following Jesus, uh, watch out for distraction. We got a witness here because distractions cause you to sink. The Bible said when Peter saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. Now the wind was boisterous all the time, but when he had his eyes focused on the Savior, and not on the storm, he walked the water. Can I tell you on my way to my seat, keep your eyes on the Savior. I don't care what happened. The doctor said, don't look good. Keep your eyes on the Savior. The job said, look like it might shut down. Keep your eyes 
on the Savior. Your husband said, go walk out. Keep your eyes on the Savior. Look unto Jesus, the author and finish of our faith. He may not come when you want him, but how many know he's always on time? Weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Help me say, in the morning. In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can he teach you a lesson in a storm? You know what a storm will do? The storm will help you know who your friends are. <laughs> a storm will help you know who you are. A storm will help you know who the Lord is. A storm will help you identify the devil. <laughs> I'm going to quit. Hippie said, thank God for the storm. Uh, uh, yes, sir. It's about eyes are closed. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you so much for now touching this house and that those you have sent here to be part of this family and fellowship. Give them courage and boldness to surrender to you now. It is in your name we pray. Amen. Door of the church is open. Invitation is extended. A letter Christian experience. Candidate for baptism. If you're here, you can come now while you have the privilege and opportunity. The door is open. Invitation belong to you. God wants to navigate your life through your stormy situation. Think it not strange if you're in a storm, you're not there by yourself. I've been in them. I know about storms. Storms leave you a different person. Storms will teach you lessons you would never learn in a university. But my God, God will be with you. In every storm you experience in life, storms are not designed to make us bitter but to make us better. David said, before I was afflicted, he said, I went astray. He said, it was good for me that I was afflicted. Psalms 27 said, the Lord is my light, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies, came up against me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and failed. Though a host shall encamp against me, even within that, I shall be confident. And then he says in verse 14, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He said, again I say, wait on the Lord. Hallelujah for the Lamb. Thank you so much, brothers. Thank you.
Bless you. Thank you. Let's prepare to worship and give in. Let's prepare to worship and give in, if we will. Thank you so much for being cheerful givers and loving the Lord in spite of us. God has been so good to us. And so many churches' doors have closed and have not reopened. But Lord have kept us. We've been able to function and function well because of faithful saints that love God and love the people of God. You have been so kind and I can't tell you enough thank you for your faithfulness, your loyalty, continuing to pay your tithes and your pastoral love offering. You have been faithful and I want to tell you thank you. Thank you for your kindness. God is real. I say he's real. God is he's real. He's serious. He's faithful. And you can depend on his word. God makes a promise. God keeps his promise. How many know he'll keep it? He'll keep it. Let's lift our gift. Second Corinthians 9 and 7. Let's read it. Every man, according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for the privilege and opportunity to be able to worship in giving. Sanctify these gifts now. It is in your name we pray. Amen. It's giving time. My brothers are coming to receive gifts from me. Here you go, Rick. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you for your praying for me and with me. I had to preach in Louisiana on last Sunday, the pastor's 32nd pastoral anniversary. And then I left there and went to Oakland, California, and conducted what they call the citywide revival Monday through Friday. And uh, my son Frank Jr. accompanied me, and I was honored to, honored to have him to be with me this past week. And thank you for your prayers. Some of you reached out to me, and called me, and texted me. I'm doing well. Amen. It's another envelope there. That old man is trying to get in my house. I won't let him in. He keep ringing the doorbell, but I, I keep ignoring him. I keep ignoring him. So. Yeah, he's trying hard. All right, Doris Redman is going to teach our class in our main body uh, this morning. I'm certain that you, she will, you will be blessed listening to her and everybody else will be in their various Christian Academy classes. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Brother uh, Mason. Thank you so much for sharing. And Brother Pope, uh, thank you all so much. And our male our men for singing this morning. The men look so dignified over there, and then they all got all got the uniforms on, and isn't that something? They just all got it. Brian, glad to see you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I want to thank Reverend Winston for blessing us last Sunday morning in the first service, and Pastor Trey for blessing last Sunday in the 9:30 service. Thank you all so much for conducting yourself in a orderly manner. Uh, now you can't do nothing uh, in church no more because it's public, it's everywhere. There's some words I want to use, but I, that I used to use. I can't use them no more because everybody's listening. There's, a, there's some people I really want to talk about, but I, I can't say nothing about them because everybody listening, amen. even when I'm away, I won't talk about y'all, but I can't, 
can't even do that because y'all listening when I'm in New York, so I just have to, y'all got me. <laughs> Finally got me. I told you this, that uh, uh, this, 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 this black brother was, he was uh, very nosy, and he worked on a plantation. Every night he would come up to the house and sit on the window because the boss would discuss with his wife what he was going to have John to do the next day. And so the next morning, John enjoyed doing that. Boss, when he, oh my, John, he said, I know. You want me, to boss, you want me to plow the north field? He said, yeah, John, my goodness. Man, you shall. Next morning, John had been sitting on the window at night. He said, all right, John, I want you. He said, I know, boss. I want you to plow the south field. I know, I know. Yeah, John, I sure do. And then one night, there was some rambling out in the, on the outside the house. Okun came up and had a had an iron pot, and the pot flipped over and had the coon caught under the pot. And uh, the husband said to the wife, "I'm gonna see if John gonna know what's under that pot. So if he do that, he's sure enough smart." So we got that, John. Yes, sir, boss. He said, what's under the pot? Called John off guard. John scratched his head. He said, well, boss. Called Zeph confessed. Well, boss, you finally caught the old coon. (laughs) 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 Let's move to the other side. Let's stay. Gracious God, our Father, again, we said to you, thank you so much for this time with you. Thank you for your wonderful blessings. Be with us, guide us, bless us, and protect us. It is in your name we pray. Amen. God bless you.